The story begins on a busy day in the train station when the train conductor screamed in terror for everyone to get out of the way because the train's control had shut down. Everybody panicked and ran to safety terrified for their lives. While everyone was running, a woman and her baby got stuck on the railway track. The woman screamed out of fear for help and that her baby was stuck. The others yelled that she should get away. They told her that it is dangerous. By the time anyone could do anything it was seemingly too late, but a man came out of nowhere and in a flash ran in front of the woman and stopped the train with one hand causing it to lose all momentum and stopping in its tracks and saving the woman and her baby. The woman and her baby were still terrified and shaking in fear. The man asked if they were all right while stretching forth an arm. As the woman was about to thank him for saving them, she looked up to his face and with great shock, she was thrown aback by his inhumane-looking face. She screamed into thin air because he had the face of a hideous monster. The man's name was Zombie as in Zom from Zombie and B from Zombie. He's literally a zombie. He's unaware of his age and when he died. He dreams of becoming friends with the humans and that one day he will not be discriminated and ostracized by them. With that dream in mind, he continued to improve himself, although it was still very far from happening, he believed that as long as he worked hard he should succeed. This was his thought as his tooth fell off while brushing his teeth. Actually in order to realize this dream, our boy has helped countless humans. One time when a crash landing plane was falling into a stadium filled with people, Zombie caught the plane which was falling vertically on his hands with ease. This left some of the eyewitnesses in shock. He also rescued some terrified kids who were stranded in a burning building but he ended up scaring their parents because of his hideous face. While wringing a piece of cloth dry, Zombie remembers that he was not always this strong. It all started on one summer day when the zombie outbreak caused the apocalypse. He was studying in school but because the outbreak happened so suddenly he wasn't able to escape on time which led to him getting bitten and infected. This was when he became an ordinary zombie. A completely ordinary zombie, just like the ones you see in a mob, following the horde wherever it goes. Until one day when the humans started to appear, they didn't come to reason with the zombies. The humans pointed a bunch of missile at the zombies and started shooting at them. A large amount of zombies were killed. The humans burnt them for fuel and also created a perpetual energy machine by exploiting them. They became the human source of electricity. Our boy is unsure as to why the zombies want to eat humans and why the humans want to kill the zombies, but to survive he had to change himself. He lifted weights, ran, swam and jumped around every day in order to achieve his dream. He thought that an independent life starts with your own efforts, so he didn't eat meat. He only ate protein powder for three meals a day. He continued to train every day despite being tired. He watched videos of humans exercising and imitated them until one day Zombie became so strong and even almost invincible. After obtaining both power and knowledge, our boy decided to live in the budding human society where he continuously helped them to change their perception of zombies. He wanted to live as a civilized, good law-abiding zombie. The scene shifts to our boy heading to the fridge to get food. Realizing that the food was all gone, he decided to go shopping. The scene shifts to a bright sunny day outside. Our boy who is referred to as Little Z by the supermarket attendant is asked if he has come to buy more stock. She asks him if it's uncomfortable wearing the mask all day thinking that he was just a human wearing a zombie mask all the while. He replies casually and says, not really. The supermarket attendant then orders the workers to assist our boy in moving the goods he bought onto the truck while he was still in the store singing to a song. Meanwhile, two private reporters were watching him in secret, one older guy and a younger one. The young reporter asked if our boy was the one they had been looking for. The old reporter informed the man that he plans to take off his mask to see his real face. He assumed that our boy was a human wearing a zombie mask. Our boy then picks up a sheet of paper frowning at the picture of a zombie named Ago, a boss-level zombie with danger-level SSS and a bounty on his head worth 9 million yuan. Our boy is displeased and wonders why this zombie is wanted again. The young reporter asks the old reporter again if he is sure that our boy was the super person who lifted an entire plane. He speculated that it might have been some false information released by the media. While the older reporter agreed that the media might have just hyped it up, he told the young man that they need to take off the supposed mask our boy has on. The next scene shows them utterly shocked as the stare at something. It turns out that they were staring at our boy. He lifted the truck full of goods and placed it on his shoulders. 
He gathered momentum and leaped into the air, causing a crack in the ground. He left the reporters in shock and wondering what just happened. He jumped so high into outer space with the truck still balanced on his shoulders. The next scene shows a gate with warning signs and a group of roaming zombies. We see a zombie mother and her child. The child told his mother he was hungry and she asked him to endure for a while. As they spoke, our boy arrived from the sky and landed with the truck still on his shoulder. He dropped the truck from his shoulders and placed it on the ground. Here the zombies refer to our boy as King or Your Majesty. A kid asked our boy why he didn't just drive the truck just like the humans. Zombie revealed to the boy that he couldn't drive the truck because he didn't have a driver's license. This place was a city he conquered. It was far away from the prying eyes of the humans. He ordered all the zombies there to use eggs to replace all the protein they got from eating human flesh. While the rest of the zombies ate, our boy asked for the whereabouts of Ago and the rest, and the same kid told him that they were in the main hall of a hotel. He pushed the main hall's door open and met a group of boss-level zombies in there. These zombies include Lang, Fur, Agon, Ago who has a bounty on his head, Varmint, and Blackie. They all have danger level of SSS. The moment he enters the room they all greet him while standing erect and referring to him as your majesty. He hands the paper he picked to Ago informing him that he is wanted by the humans again. Ago apologizes. He explains to his boss that his body loses control once he sees a human. Our boy then walks towards a chair and sits down. Blackie brings to our boy's notice of the need to relocate due to their increasing numbers and that it might attract the humans to them. Varmint happily suggests that they should go fight it out with the humans. He claims his chainsaw has begun to rot from not having enough fresh blood for so long. Our boy then interrupted him asking him what he knows about the humans and reassuring him of how terrifying they can be. While they were discussing, a chuffing sound came from outside and they were confused and wondered what the sound was. It turns out that it was the sound of the chuffing blade of an aircraft that was hovering over their city and a lady with huge breasts standing in it. The scene shifts and we are taken to the aircraft. The lady who is referred to as president is standing and staring at some images displayed in the screen. A member of the crew informs her that all signals are normal and clear and a lady tells her that all equipment are ready to go. The president asks about the payload, referring to a large armed nuclear warhead, which was set to detonate in 20 minutes. Our boy is still seated on the couch wondering about what's going on. Meanwhile, the president is pleased with the progress so far. The president plans to kill all the zombies and she refers to them as disgusting. The spinning blades off the aircraft flying in the air gave Varman a clue that it was the humans. He offered to go cut them up, but our boy refused and said that he will lose control the moment he gets close to the humans. Our boy asks them to evacuate the city and decides to go deal with the humans himself. The president is still staring at the screen when she asks the ground unit if they're ready and tells them that they have only 20 minutes to save the civilians and evacuate. She repeats this a second time for clarity then they acknowledge the information. The scene shifts to a man who's standing on the edge of the back door of an aircraft still in the air. He is referred to as Marshall and is asked to be on standby and ready to intercept if a boss-level zombie shows up. Marshall is a fierce and fearful-looking individual with a sword, fangs, and a shade that covers his eyes. He confirms receiving the information and assures the president that the moment a boss-level zombie shows up, he'll cut it down. There were a lot of zombies running towards the humans. Then another individual called Mr. Fay is informed by his assistant that the people from the Extraordinary Academy have found the zombies. Brother Fay is pleased to hear this, he decided to play with them. A finger pushes a button and lets down a cage full of humans who acted as bait. They screamed for help and asked for someone to save them that they didn't want to die. Immediately the cage lands on the ground. The zombies took the bait and ran towards the cage full of humans. A voice informed the ground unit that they detected signs of human life and that they should proceed to the mark location immediately. The ground unit acknowledged the information. The ground unit moved towards the cage of humans and saw the zombies gathered around the cage. They started shooting at them. Then a girl complains about a zombie that refuses to die with frustration written all over her face. The next scene shows two kids holding onto each other while avoiding being hit by the bullets. Then we see zombies standing in front of them shielding them from the bullets without being hurt or harmed in any way. A guy with a missile launcher aims it at our boy claiming that there's no such thing as an unkillable zombie. 
He said that even if one exists it's because they're not using enough firepower. He shoots the missile, sending it towards our boy which then explodes as it gets to him. As the explosion settles someone brings to the notice of the squad captain that our boy is not a zombie. They think he's an extraordinary who has been saving people lately. They also think he's wearing a zombie mask. While staring at a picture of our boy catching a plane from earlier, the captain exclaimed saying that they'd shot the wrong person. As they spoke, the dust cleared and zombie emerged from the explosion and scathed. The president was monitoring the whole situation from the plane. She informed Marshall that a boss zombie had been detected in Zone B. Marshall acknowledged the information and asked them to let him handle it. Immediately he said this, he jumped out of the plane, several feet off the ground. Brother Faye stood beside his assistant while paying attention to the whole situation. He got informed that the people from the Extraordinary Academy have saved almost all the civilians. He comments that they might have underestimated them. Brother Faye then decided to try something different, and his assistant completely understood. The scene shifts to a horde of zombies running towards something with three blue little monitors and a red one. One of the zombies in the horse stopped in its tracks and started transforming into a boss zombie. His arm got bigger than his whole body fully transformed. The zombies appear to have five different tongues. It got so much bigger that it cracked through the ground. Our boy still standing in the rubble from the explosion and Marshall on his way, they alerted everyone that the boss level had been detected in Zone B. A member of the ground unit squad acknowledged and said they'd be heading there immediately but the squad leader quickly ran off to grab zombie. The squad leader stated while running with our boy on his shoulder that saving a life is more important. This statement threw the rest of the squad in shock. He flung our boy into the back of the truck and ordered the driver to start driving. The driver drove off with zombie and the rest of the squad in the back of the truck where they questioned him about being the zombie mask guy who always helped the humans. A girl asked our boy why he always wears the zombie mask. Our boy just gave a suspicious laugh. The scene shifts to a group of armed soldiers at the location where the boss zombie is. They wondered about what the zombie was doing. The zombie lifted a bus and threw it across aiming for the soldiers when out of nowhere the marshal came and sliced the bus in half saving the soldiers. The bus fell into two parts and the soldiers celebrated the marshal's arrival. They were certain they'd win with the marshal there to help them. The marshal ordered them to take the civilians and leave. He decided to take on the boss zombie himself. Away from the boss zombie the other soldiers are evacuating the civilians, advising them to go in a queue while others are discussing the situation ahead with the marshal and the boss zombie. After the squad leader, zombie and the rest of the crew got to a stop. Our boy heard the roar of the boss zombie and recognized it referring to him as Little Nine. A girl from the squad assured our boy of their willingness to help. She asked him not to fear but the moment she turned around to look at him, she noticed that he has vanished which left her confused wondering where he went. The next scene shows the marshal talking to the boss zombie asking him if it hurts. The zombie roars and rushed to attack the marshal. It stretched out its arms to attack him. The marshal readied his sword by pulling it out of the sheath just a little bit with his thumb. He claimed to help the boss zombie by ending its misery once and for all. He pulled out his sword in style, moved past the boss zombie, he sliced it in half by the torso in a flash. The boss zombie caught in shock fell to the ground in two pieces. The marshal sheathed his sword and said to the zombie that he could rest in peace now. Our boy then arrived too late to save little nine. The marshal sensed our boy's presence and turned around to see him. Meanwhile our boy was staring at little nine's body paying no attention to the soldier. The marshal had already sent a message to the president that the boss zombie had been defeated. The president praised him and asked that it be added to the marshal's contribution. While zombie soliloquized out loud, he said it wasn't the human's fault that the zombies just can't control themselves. Hearing this, the marshal knew our boy was a zombie as well, so he launched an attack on our boy. Back in the aircraft, zombie's presence had been detected, but they had faith in the marshal to kill him too. Before they knew it, the marshal was already gone. The president was shocked to hear this. Our boy defeated the marshal in a flawless victory and hung him half naked on a street pole. The marshal was left there half dead. His vitals were almost completely gone and had suffered critical damage. The soldiers were yet to evacuate all the civilians at the time. The president was infuriated. She jumped out of the aircraft and went to quickly deal with our boy. She didn't even respond to the crew calling her back. The crew tried to talk sense into the president by telling her she was too rash and that she shouldn't just charge in there alone. 
but she wanted to see for herself how strong Zombie is. She jumped out of the plane, aiming directly for our boy, intending to use her white blade cleave on him. Unfortunately for her, the sword broke without even leaving a scratch on our boy. This left her shocked and wondering what he was made of. She leaped backwards to re-strategize while her crew expressed concerns about her charging into combat without informing them. They told her that they can't send support to her because they don't have sufficient information and asked if she was okay. She said she was fine. Our boy tried reasoning with her by telling her that he sincerely apologizes, but seeing that he could speak properly, the president assumed he was some sort of mutant so in order to kill him she pulled out the enhanced blade. He pleaded that she listen to him, but she attacked anyway, asking him to go talk to Yama. She ran towards him, swinging the blade trying to kill our boy, but he kept dodging all her strikes. Then she pulled out of her sheath the red blade cleave, struck an attack, but he dodged it by bending backwards and letting it go over him. The blade was so strong that it cut through street poles in just one slash. She got so mad at our boy dodging all her strikes that she cussed at him calling him a fucking mutant. She said that he was playing with her. Meanwhile, the soldiers were still trying to evacuate all the civilians and the marshal as well, who seemed to be convulsing and going through a lot of pain. When they succeeded in rounding up everyone, they informed the president and asked her to retreat, but she didn't respond, causing them to wonder if she could hear them or not. Back to the duel. The president was still hell-bent on killing Zombie, but our boy kept on running from her. She was so angry at him asking him why he was running. He told her that it is because she will try to cut him if he stops running. The president then stopped and unleashed the Iedo level 2, which is a Japanese style of drawing, attacking, and sheathing the blade in a successive order. She launched her rocket boots to full power and met him in the air and attacked him. She landed heroically while our boy fell on his back, presumably dead. She sheathed her sword and said target eliminated. The president presumed our boy was dead, so she ordered the plane's altitude to be lowered so they could pick her up and leave. Brother Fei's assistant informed him that the humans had rescued all the civilians. Brother Fei, thinking of what to do, revealed that they had a spy and decided to use him. While the humans celebrated their victory thinking they were all saved, Brother Fei had a different agenda in mind. He ordered the spy to launch the nuke to the city while the president was still there. The spy snuck into the pilot room and quietly pushed the button releasing the nuke. By the time the pilot could notice, it was already too late and the missile was already on its way. The other passengers on board were unaware of what had happened, so they were still celebrating expecting to be on their way home until the pilot brought it to their notice about the enemy spy among them and the nuke that had been dropped which drove them to shock. The president was also informed about the spy and the nuke and was advised to return to the ship ASAP. This made her confuse. The passengers were advised to prepare for turbulence because they'll have to open the cabin doors while lowering altitude so that the president can get in. They told her that she'd have to jump into the ship or they won't be able to escape the explosion. She didn't seem to be responding and the pilot were wondering if she was back on board yet because they were running out of time. Her leg boosters were not working anymore. She had used up all the batteries to catch Zombie earlier. While she wondered if she forgot to charge the batteries before heading out, our boy got up, to the president's surprise, he grabbed her by her blouse, he spun her while she yelled at him to unhand her. Our boy flung her onto the aircraft. The crew ran to her and asked her if she was alright but the doors were ordered to be shut immediately she was on board. This made her even more angry with our boy. With the missile still headed towards the city, our boy stood unafraid. He leaped into the air creating a crack in the floor. He used a technique known as barehanded nuclear warhead catch. He heroically caught it barehanded to stop it from reaching the city and caused it to explode in the air. The president and her crew were left shocked at this. Even Brother Fei and his assistant couldn't believe their eyes. The explosion was large and covered a large part of the city's sky. The blast also caused turbulence on the president's ship. She was surprised that Zombie was willing to do that to save her. She wore a frown on her face after she witnessed the explosion. Our boy then landed safely with his clothes all ripped off from the explosion, but not a scratch on him except an itch on his buttock. Dr. Fay said it was time to go, but his assistant informed him of the presence of a life signature in the area of the explosion. Dr. Fay claimed to have fought those from the Beyonders Academy and is assured that they would fight again and that they will defeat them. Back in the helicopter, the president seemed confused. Some of the crew members discussed among themselves. One of them asked about what was wrong with her. 
Another of the crew members on board said she is that way because she had spent her whole life fighting against zombies and now has been rescued by one. A girl who thinks that they misunderstood the situation with our boy pulls up videos of him rescuing people which leads them to believe he is actually a human in a zombie mask and not an actual zombie. He had become rather famous lately. They found out that he lived in the city for a while and think that he just likes to hide his identity in the mask. The president accidentally cracked the device they were using to view our boy. Meanwhile, on a bright sunny day, Zombie had just left the explosion scene. He still has on those ripped clothes damaged in the blast. People stared at him in shock and a little bit of fear. He was on a call with Varmint in a phone booth. Varmint was one of the boss level zombies. He told our boy not to worry about them, that they escaped safely and were just looking for somewhere to stay. Zombie is pleased to hear this. He plans to find them again when they get a place to settle down. He then went to the apartment where he stayed. He walked down the hall and puts in his password to gain access to his room. The president and her crew were able to determine his whereabouts through a camera. They saw him half naked in tattered clothes and were shocked. While he was working out in his apartment, there was a display of a selfie of him and other boss zombies. Our boy referred to them as family and wondered if they were able to settle down yet so that he could go visit them. While he was working out, the president kicked the apartment door open and barged in, leaving our boy startled. She ordered her crew to take every of his things from the kitchen to the bathroom and his bedroom be taken out. Zombie was startled when he saw this. He asked them to tell him who they were and what they were doing. He even threatened to call the police. The president showed our boy a sheet of paper and told him that he has been accepted into the Beyonders Academy. She informed him that he would be a member of the Academy. The president pointed at Zombie and gestured to her men to take him. Our boy tried resisting. He told them that zombies cannot go to school, implying that he in fact is a zombie but she thought he was pretending and asked them to take him away. When they got outside, one of the members of the academy expressed her concern by reminding the president of the academy's strict criteria for recruitment. She also mentioned that there might not be a dorm to accommodate him because the academy's dorms are specifically planned out the president informed her subordinate that Zombie will stay with her. After they got to the academy, the men speedily took our boy's things inside and placed it in a bedroom. They bowed and left. The president was seated while our boy knelt down. They stared at each other in silence for a while. Zombie was speechless. He then asked her if he'll be staying there with her, and if he'll be sleeping there also while laughing weirdly. She said that he was asking an obvious question, and she asked him if the reason for the question was because he wanted to sleep with her. He interjected and explained that that's not how he meant it. The thought of a zombie sleeping with a human was absurd to our boy. The president told him that he'd be sleeping in the guest room. Our boy still tried to convince the president that he actually is a zombie, but she interrupted him by detaching her prosthetic legs revealing her amputated legs. Our boy was surprised and asked her about what happened to her legs. She said she cut her legs off and asked him if he had a problem with that. It happened when a zombie outbreak occurred in her village while she was younger. Her parents got infected and they bit her on her legs. She had to cut the legs off and kill both her parents who had turned into zombies in order to survive. She hates zombies and she vowed to kill every zombie she meets. The president said all that to let our boy know the consequences of him being a zombie, so he refrained from telling her. In order to change the topic Zombie asked her about what the Beyonders Academy is. The president told him that it was created two centuries after the first zombie outbreak occurred. It is an organization which specializes in coming up with ways to fight zombies. Our boy was left speechless. In order to survive the zombie outbreak, their ancestors established the academy. She said that their only purpose is to fight the zombies and that it has nurtured various talents over the years to achieve that. The Academy has been running for 800 years now, and the outbreak started 1,000 years ago. Hearing that, our boy recalled the period at which he got infected. He became a zombie at the start of the first outbreak. He was shocked to realize it had been 1,000 years since he became a zombie. The president told our boy to report to the Academy the next day because she already enlisted him through a black channel. While he considered not going, she assured him that if he tried to run, his motive for running will be investigated because they are not just an ordinary academy. She introduced herself as Violet and told him that a girl named Dawn will be the one to bring him to the academy the following day, however, he didn't know the Dawn she spoke of. The next morning Dawn stood beside our boy and greeted him calling him a little mask brother. 
but he didn't know who she was. She got offended that our boy couldn't remember her, so she reminded him that they were together in the armored personnel carrier. He made reference to her height saying she looks taller than she did back then. She was annoyed to hear this. She tried to calm herself down saying it would be best not to argue with her future classmates. She then walked him to the venue for their entrance exam. Our boy was shocked, unaware that he had to take an entrance exam. Don assured him saying that every school does entrance exams before accepting candidates. She said that he'd have to take an entrance exam because it was necessary to test his physical abilities as well as his special skills for killing zombies. He would need to beat the world record of fastest 100-meter runner which was 9.58 seconds. He has to finish at least 9.57 seconds to qualify. Our boy jokingly asked if that's what the Beyonder means in the Beyonders Academy. She asked him to tell her what he thought it meant. He revealed to her that he previously imagined the Academy was an asylum and they all were mad people. The scene shifts and we see Zombie and Dawn arrive at a large space where they met a lot of individuals who came to participate in the test. They saw all sorts of people with different looks and abilities. Dawn sat on our boy's shoulders and complained about being unable to see properly because they were at the back. A guy arrogantly asked her to shut the fuck up and referred to her as trash that should be left behind. Don asked the man to mind his business. Our boy asked if it was still necessary to do the exam since he already lifted a plane as proof of his abilities. Don told him that they all had special abilities there, and a lot of other people there can lift planes as well. She informed Zombie that the academy was regulated by the old government, so everyone there had some sort of secret, and also that no one watches the news there. Some moments later a man with a wooden leg who would be their examiner for the day asked everyone to settle down. He cleared his throat and spoke through a microphone welcoming them to the exam. His name was Chen. He was the sports department president. He started his speech by saying that it has been 800 years since the academy has been established and their ancestors who fought against the zombie king could even split mountains. He mentioned that he didn't need anyone to split mountains. He was in the middle of the speech when our boy interrupted him to ask a small question. He was curious about the consequences if a zombie is found in the academy premises. Chen answered and said they'll rip it limb from limb, hang it outside for people to see and also neuter it. Zombie did not understand what it means to be neutered. With a smile on his face, Chen explained to our boy that they will cut off the zombie's cock. This statement really left our little boy utterly frightened. The sun was out and the first test was the 100-meter sprint. Immediately, the coach fired his gun. The participants ran at their top speed. They circled through the stadium at a crazy speed. A participant known as Wu Chunshu flawlessly passed the finish line in three seconds while Zombie came in last. The next was shooting, which was believed to have been the easiest way to kill the zombies. According to Chin, if you do it well, you will fuck the zombie up. If not, the zombie will mess you up. Our boy felt dragged into the academy to train to fight the zombies other than gaining theoretical knowledge on zombies, they also did training exercises. Don passed the shooting test flawlessly hitting all the scarecrows which made zombie feel terrible. Our boy stopped to stare at an angry person taking it out on a scarecrow. The next test was shot put. They needed to hit 80 meters to pass and 100 meters to qualify, then they were told to start, a couple of people failed while some qualified. Zombie constantly felt terrible for being trapped here with the seemingly crazy people. He made sure to control his strength in order not to attract attention. Chen read Zombie's stats with a recommendation from Violet for our boy attached to it. He only had a passing score on all his tests. Chen sensed he was pretending to be weak because Violet already told him he was very strong. The next test was Javelin. Wu Chen Xu went first and qualified in the Javelin test with a 32 kilometers throw. The javelin went through three different scarecrows and finally stopped on a signboard and hung there. Even Chen was surprised. When it was our boy's turn, Chun stopped him and asked if he was the one introduced by Violet and told him that she said he was very strong and that his current results do not match Violet's remarks. Chen asked him if he was deliberately hiding his strength. Don and the other participants were shocked to hear the question. He told him that everyone there puts in there all to be qualified and no one dared to hold back. Chen asked him if he's human but Zombie interjected and assured him that he was human. Chen asked him to use his full power. He told Zombie that if he can throw a tenth of the previous throw, he will qualify but if not he'll be treated as a spy for tricking Violet into believing he was strong and will be punished for it. Our boy thought about the time when he was just turned into a zombie 
He didn't want to be burned as fuel and doesn't want to be used as an energy generator either. He has to do his best this time around. He planned to throw it as far as he could. Zombie thought about what he'd been living for all this while. All his workouts and exercises and trainings. He played back all the training he went through in his mind. The moment he thought of this, Zombie took a stance and threw the javelin. He threw it so far into space that it went through a satellite. The momentum pushed everyone away leaving them amazed. Even the old man was shocked. Zombie left a huge hole in the moon. Guys we have come to the end of our video. If you guys want more of this recap, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button for more recaps. See you guys later.